Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello, we are alive and well and full of energy and it's just wonderful to be uh, together again, isn't it? I'm so thankful that we can uh, kind of be under one roof at one time as, as one family again. That's uh, uh, a wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful thing to, to be God's people together on a very beautiful summer's day. You could be anywhere in the world and you chose to be here for the next number of minutes to celebrate what God is doing uh, through us and among us. In spite of us, we are, uh, we are here uh, to celebrate God, uh, Christ's love and the Spirit is bringing us together. Special welcome to those who are worshiping with us online. Uh, I hope when you're watching this, it's a beautiful summer's day, or maybe it's a cool summer evening up by the by the lake or wherever you might be, uh, but know that you are uh, welcome among us and that the Spirit is present with you wherever you may be worshiping. Uh, a couple of announcements uh, to begin. Uh, next Sunday, really excited uh, for uh, this wonderful opportunity that we have uh, to, every, uh, every Sunday is an opportunity to reach out to our neighbors, but uh, this one in, in particular, we're going to meet at Coronation Park at 11 o'clock for a worship service. Um, and uh, following the worship service, we're going to have a picnic lunch. Uh, you need to bring your own lunch uh, uh, for yourself and bring a bag lunch or whoever you want to bring it. And we'll just have, have fun uh, eating together and visiting together. And we have a very special guest uh, joining us. I am really excited that uh, Hallelujah is joining us. And if you've ever been to the Grimsby Market, uh, you may have seen him at work uh, with his balloon creations. Uh, he does fabulous work. He's going to come and, uh, and share a special story. Uh, we're going to maybe say it's for the kids, but let's be honest, it's for everybody. Uh, we all like that. And uh, he's going to be, be hanging around after the service as well, um, you know, making balloon animals and creations and, and telling stories. Uh, it's, a, it's a really wonderful opportunity uh, for, for us to worship together and God's creation. And if it rains, we can come back here. We've got, we got a nice barn here, don't we? We can come back here and, and be together. Um, but our hope is for a, for a sunny day and we can get together. And again, this is um, really, uh, and my, my hope and prayer is kind of the culmination of a lot of the work that we've been doing over the last couple of years uh, in connecting with families that, uh, that have met with us in, in different places uh, to, to worship. Uh, and to, to do some learning and some fellowship with us. And our hope is that, uh, that the Saint, our St. John's family get to meet some of our new families from our neighborhood. We come together, uh, get to know each other, uh, have some fun, and, and most of all, celebrate uh, who God is and what God is doing uh, in our lives and in our communities. And so uh, I would really uh, urge you um, to invite someone to come with you next Sunday. It's gonna be a, a particularly special time um, and uh, it's just just come and, and, and be part of that. And we're going to be there as well on July the 31st for a uh, worship service and following that uh, in uh, honor, I guess, of the Canada Games that are, are starting shortly down the road in St. Catharines. We're going to begin the Grimsby Games, which are going to be some, some good fun uh, games for people of all ages, not just kids. Uh, there's going to be some, uh, some uh, grown-up friendly games, senior friendly games as well. Uh, so again, just another opportunity to uh, to worship God, have fun together. We're gonna have a pizza lunch, and so if you'd like to uh, partake in the pizza, uh, just let us know uh, by the Wednesday before. So that's July the twenty seventh. Let Nancy know in the office, just so we know how much to order for you. Um, and uh, we just look forward to to these opportunities when we can uh, be together, not just as as a St. John's family. Uh, but as a, as a welcoming community, hoping uh, to connect with neighbors uh, and to, to deepen and develop uh, new Christian friendships with them. So uh, I'm very excited and my hope and prayer is that you can catch the excitement as well. <coughs> Let us uh, take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship God. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In the beautiful uh, creation that God has blessed us with. In this beautiful family of people who love the Lord. 
who trust in him, long to love him and trust him more, uh, and as we long to, to love and trust one another in a deep way, that we are welcomed uh, into this time and space in God's presence as one family that we prepare to worship. So please pray with me. Loving and almighty God, we thank you for the gift of togetherness, the gift of your faithfulness, uh, and the gift of your incredible power through the Holy Spirit. We also thank you, Lord, for the person of Jesus Christ, who, uh, who lived and walked and taught and loved uh, and, and was hurt among us as well, Lord. We thank you for uh, his example, uh, and we thank you, above all, for his death on the cross and his resurrection three days later, that we too would know that our sins uh, have a cost, but that our, our sins will be forgiven because of Christ's resurrection. Lord, help us to reflect and celebrate uh, on this uh, powerful, uh, powerful uh, truth today and celebrate it being lived out uh, among us and through us. Gracious God, we give these next moments over to you. May you uh, be blessed and glorified in the things we say and sing, what we, how we read and reflect, and how uh, we celebrate the resurrection today. These moments are yours. Holy Spirit, come and touch us and teach us now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This time I invite you to stand if you're able, and we will praise God by singing the church's one foundation.
Please be seated, and now we'll hear God's word from Psalm 66. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's scripture is taken from Psalm 66, 1 to 20, and can be found on the screen. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. You brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God. Tell me, let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. The word of the Lord. Are you folks familiar with the word lectionary? Yeah, so yeah, Jill is. That's good. That's good. Le uh, the lectionary now the, um, is uh, a tool that's that's been developed um, by uh, a number of groups, but um, uh, there's a kind of an ecumenical group that uh, created the Revised Common Lectionary, which is basically just a fancy way of saying a series of prescribed readings over sort of a three-year cycle that that preachers can can use uh, sort of to, to follow through the scriptures. And each week, there is a, a, a reading from the Old Testament, from the Psalms, from the Gospels, and, uh, and from the Epistles. Typically, that's the typical rhythm. And each week, um, there's a, a different reading prescribed. And if you follow it to the letter, Theoretically, you will, in, in a three-year cycle, uh, be able to preach from every uh, single book in the scriptures uh, and be able to, to try and make ties to, uh, to, to each of these books. Now, you don't cover every chapter and every nuance. Um, it's a helpful roadmap. I don't particularly find it 100% complete, but hey, you know what? It's a good, it's a good guide, and I, uh, I, I follow it sometimes. All that is to say is that uh, this uh, Psalm 66 uh, comes from the lectionary, and they, they sort of choose specific chapters and, and verses um, in, the, in the lectionary for the scripture readings. Uh, and for the lectionary, when they, they chose Psalm 66, they do verses 1 to 9. Um, and uh, and those, those verses on their own, they're, they're great. In that they, they talk about, first of all, it, it's a psalm um, about God, about God's, God's character, who God is. And it's a, it's a song uh, uh, and a psalm of praise. And it was written for uh, the, uh, one of the Jewish harvest festivals. 
And so again, you think, okay, uh, you, you've got uh, uh, people who have had, uh, had crops and they know that the Lord has, has blessed them with the things that they need and they've been able to harvest them from the ground. And hey, that's, that's great. And at the end of the year, uh, or at the end of the growing season, you come and have a little festival to the Lord. It's a, maybe a little bit like our, our modern day Thanksgiving. And that's a, that's a real fun time. So this is a, a great psalm for that. The first nine verses talk about all the wonderful things that God has done for God's people. Uh, uh, focuses uh, in this particular psalm on, uh, on his uh, deliverance of the people and the exodus from Egypt, taking them out of slavery and taking them into uh, a, a new promised land and, and uh, causing the, the sea to part so they could walk uh, walk across on, on dry land and, uh, uh, and not drown and not be stuck. Um, and so, again, looking at the powerful deeds and the powerful presence of God for God's people. And that's a very much uh, a happy, clappy kind of thing. And so I wonder, and when the, the folks that were designing the lectionary said, you know what, we'll cut it off at a chapter or a verse nine because that's that kind of sort of sums up all the all the good times uh, that we've had. But then you get into verses uh, ten to twelve, but things get a little bit dicey, and I, it baffles me a little bit as to why uh, the editors would choose to to cut out these three verses because it talks about difficult times. Or senses where God, you have tested us and you have tried us like silver. Well hang on, that doesn't that doesn't sound so exciting, does it? That doesn't sound really all that praiseworthy, does it? Uh, God, you have you I've been through a time of, of testing, a time of, of trial. I feel uh, like I've been kind of refined like silver. There have been times when I, I felt the, the pressure uh, of stress. I felt like the, the world is on fire around me. And I'm in a difficult time. And you've seen me through that time, but it's been difficult. Verse 11 says, You brought me into a net and laid affliction on me. Well, that doesn't sound great. Why, hey, why would we suffer that? Were, were we talking about how great and powerful God is and, and how wonderful our, our relationship is and, and life is perfect uh, because we know the Lord? But hang on. Verse 11 maybe tells a bit of a different story. A little bit. It, the, the tone has changed. The, the waters have become muddy. Then uh, verse 12, you... You let people ride over our heads, and we went through fire and through water. Well, that doesn't sound very good, does it? A little bit like oh, James Taylor, right? Through fire and rain, you know, a little fire and water. That's, you know. But then, we see the end of verse 12. Yet, you have brought me forth into a spacious place. And I think sometimes as God's people, as followers of God, we want to focus on strictly on the verse 1 to 9 relationship with God. Where God is, is perfect and wonderful and it's great to, to praise his name and uh, look at all of the, all the good stuff that happens when we follow God. The same is true when we're Christians, right? As followers of Christ, it can be it can be a, a wonderful thing, a blessing thing. We look around, uh, uh, look around at the people sitting beside you, in front of you, behind you. That reminds you and reminds all of us that that we are together on a journey because we believe in Christ. Because of our belief in Christ, we've gotten to know other people and we care for them, we love them, and they love us in the way that Christ loves us. We could all hold hands and sing Kumaya and be good with that. But you and I know how life goes. And sure, we love the seasons of uh, Psalm 66, 1 to 9, when things are great and wonderful. But it's also important to realize 
there are seasons of Psalms 66, 10 to 12, which don't feel so comfortable, which don't feel uh, so wonderful. They're quite unsettling. They're quite painful physically, emotionally, spiritually. And I think to, to gloss over those, those three verses is a huge error and uh, a, a big uh, trouble that, uh, that we have um, in, our, in our walk with Christ. Because God is certainly there for the good times, but def definitely there in the times of struggle. He sees us through those things. And as I've uh, walked along beside you in sort of my, my six and a half years here, I've come to know your verse 1 to 9 times and your verse 10 to 12 times. In the six years that I've, I've been here, Pretty much all of you have, have been, have spent some time in either one of those seasons. And unfortunately, there are, are some among us who are in that sort of verse 10 to 12 season right now. And we pray for you, and we're here for you, uh, and, and we support you. We walk with you as Christ walks with you. You're not alone, because we've been in a 10 to 12 season. But as we as we look at um, this this sort of last line in verse 12, you have brought me into a spacious place. What's a, what's a spacious place? Well, that's it could be any number of things. I don't think. You're talking about something uh, physical, but I believe that it's it's talking about uh, a place that is open with opportunity, a place uh, that has ground that needs to be tilled, a place with good soil where where good things can grow, that we sow the seeds, a place of abundance as uh, some translations would say. And I think as, and I believe, as a, as a congregation here at St. John's, we are being led to a spacious place. And it is just before us. When I think of my, my time with you here, the first few years were kind of a Psalm 1 to 9 season, a lot of things to celebrate. We had some hardships along the way. We had some dearly beloved people pass away uh, and, and to go be with the Lord. And those were difficult times. We had people that went through seasons of illness. But I think as, as a community, we had a, a sense of hopefulness. And then 2020 came and that really... Uh, it shook the whole world uh, upside down, and it, uh, it led to a lot of hard things, a lot of, uh, a lot of physical illness, a lot of mental and emotional and spiritual strain, uh, a, a lot of people feeling uh, isolated and alone and apart, uh, a time of grief, and a time of, of anger, and a time of hurt, a time of longing, a time of lament. So as a community, we had some we had some good things happen. God was certainly working working through us and present with us. But collectively, as a community of faith, we've kind of been through our, our Psalm 10 through 12a uh, phase. And I, I know there's some still residuals of that uh, happening. But even through this time of hardship, the Lord has been preparing us to, to do something, to be someone, 
to share and show the love of Christ with people in this St. John's community, but more importantly, to the neighbors and strangers around us that share Grimsby as our home. And we've really maybe tried doing some different things and, and, and it's maybe felt a little bit uncomfortable or, or some have even looked down the noses a little bit and saying, well, I'm glad that's happening for those people, but it ain't going to happen to me. But the truth is, if any congregation wants to grow, wants to, to be sustainable, a couple of things need to happen. First of all, they need to have that, that foundation of having a relationship with Christ and, and build firmly on the truth that is found in his scripture. And to trust in the Lord that he can uh, that he will continue to to lead and equip us to shape us to mold us and a trust in the Holy Spirit that as we take some uncertain steps the Spirit can empower us and it will empower us and will equip us and will guide us and will provide for us and will grow us that's a uh, that's the one thing that, that a congregation in this climate, in a, a climate of hopefully emerging from the, the pandemic and, and all of the hardships that have come from that, that's the one thing that you need. The other thing that's important, that is an essential ingredient, is the ability not just to think outside the box, but to live outside the box. And do so intentionally with the expectation that God will provide the things that we need to do that. That the Holy Spirit will lead us in the situations and, and, and the conversations that will sow those seeds of faith in others, or that will help them to grow as we ourselves grow. We can, we can sit and pine for, for some people that have been away to come back all we want. But I think in the last year, we've had a really good sense of who is still with us and maybe who has wandered away. And I think it's time for us to, to stop waiting and to start moving, to take some next steps, to live fully as as the men, the women, and the children that God is, is calling and equipping us to be, and living in, in that Christian community that God is calling and equipping us to be, and being willing to invite others to join. Some would say, well, we need to keep waiting for, for other people to come back, and, and they, they may or may not come back. But we, have, we have, are running out of time to sit and wait. If we keep waiting, more time will pass and, uh, and, and more opportunities will pass us by. But we are entering a spacious place. The Lord has led us to this place and it's time for us to sow some seeds of faith. It's time for us to start living in a way that intentionally engages and invites people to join in with what God is doing among us. I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to, to think for a moment. Who is St. John's for? Who is St. John's for? Who are we here for? Have you thought about it? If you have the thought, share. Who, who is St. John's here for? Who are we here for? For Christ. Hey, that's, a, that's great. We're here, we're here for Christ. To, to bear witness to his presence that, that tells a story of how 
what, uh, what he has done and what he is doing for us makes a difference in our lives and it compels us to live differently and to love differently. But it takes a lot of trust to live and love in that way. Now, the next couple of weeks, we're going to try an experiment. We're going to think and live outside the box, outside the church building, whether permitted. But this is an opportunity. This is one of those spacious opportunities that we have to invite people to come and take part in what God is doing through us. We think about the good things that, that come from, from St. John's. Tell me, what, what's great about St. John's? Tell me. Say it out loud. What's great about St. John's? The people. the people, okay, yeah, it's great. What, but why? Show love to each other. Show love to each other, sure, that's right. Welcoming. We're welcoming. What else? We love to eat. We love <laughs> to eat. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Anything else? Love to sing. Love to sing. <laughs> well, let's let's just think about some of these 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 thoughts that have come off the top of your head. Or there, there's people here. There's a community. Hey, that's that's a great thing. People are looking for a community these days. We are welcoming. I I probably have uh, beaten this horse to death in my time here, but I keep saying. St. John's is out of the various congregations I've been a part of. St. John's is the most hospitable group of people that I've been a part of. I, you can't teach people to be this hospitable. You guys just are that. You're welcoming people. You love to sing and you love to eat. That's what we're going to do the next couple weeks. We're going to want to sing and, and eat uh, and just have fun together. Celeb it's going to be a celebration of who Christ is and how he makes a difference in our lives. My hope and prayer is that that these things will encourage and inspire you to invite somebody to come and take part in this stuff. It's life-changing stuff. It's something that, yeah, maybe, maybe it gives us a, a boost in the moment, certainly, but it's not about us. It's about God. As we look in this through this whole Psalm uh, 66, the focus is on God and what God is doing. And, and the person that's writing this kind of has some reflections about maybe some of their own experience of going through a difficult time, of, of feeling like the world's on fire around them, of feeling maybe caught in a trap sometimes, being weighed down. But the, the, the last verses of Psalm 66 talk about this person's willingness, because of who God is and how deep God's love is, that this person is going to worship God, celebrate God's presence, and do so sacrificially. To give up some of the things that maybe they would hold dear to them. Maybe dear was the wrong word because they're talking about goats and rams. But anyway, that's a bad, bad joke. I make lots of them these days. But still, it's a, it's a sacrifice to, to give up something that that you, you've worked hard to, to raise and, and, and to care for. And in, in that time and in that culture, um, that was a, a, a way of, of showing honor in that way to God. But it's time for us to stop, stop waiting for other people to enter into our little comfortable box. It's time for us to, to stand up and, and be willing to engage and invite other people into what is happening. The church, not just St. John's, but the church itself across this globe is the one, I guess, institution or one organization that exists primarily for the benefit of other people who are not members of it. 
Our purpose as Christians is to invite people into a relationship with Christ and to do whatever uh, whatever means necessary. Another another quote that that I, I, I read recently, and I'm sure you've heard this too. Pray like everything depends on God, but work like everything depends on you. Pray like everything depends on God, work like everything depends on you. And it's this earnest pursuit of a relationship with God, not just for ourselves, but for other people, that will cause a congregation to grow and to thrive. A heart for Christ and a heart for neighbors and strangers in this community. Now, six and a half years ago, you may or may not remember this day. I, I remember it quite well. We came together and, and we worshiped. And it was kind of interesting, just in kind of my time away, coming back and just seeing how, how the, the, the service kind of came together. But just on that day, as, as, as uh, happened today, uh, our, our good friend Lori was helping with the music, and Iris read the scripture, and, uh, and Nancy and Graham did their, their work behind the scenes pulling the, the service together. The, the, the people, miraculously, the participants that were leading haven't really changed. But the other thing that happened that day is, is uh, I, I preached to you the very first time we talked about uh, the the woman who who had been uh, been bleeding for a long time for like 12 years and reached out to Christ in a crowd and she was healed and that day I told you and reminded you and encouraged you that people are reaching out because they're looking for healing they're looking for hope they're looking for something good to hold on to and that good thing is the gospel and Christ is not physically present with us but we are his church we are the physical representation of Christ and six and a half uh, years ago my heart was that uh, people are reaching out for us and it's up to us to reach out to them as well and that we can connect in powerful ways to transform lives to the person of Christ. And I remember after that sermon, it's never happened to me in my entire life before then or after then. Chances are, if you're here today, and you were here on that, that Sunday six and a half years ago, you stood up and clapped for whatever reason. It was the most strange thing that I've ever seen in a worship service ever. And I don't believe it's because I'm a particularly compelling preacher. I think you you and I know that. I've taken an online course this summer to, to, to work and to hone in that gift. You and I know that. I believe it's because the Spirit was extremely present with us that day. That it moved us in a way that said, aha, that's, that's God calling us to work together. Now, I don't expect anybody to stand up and, and clap after this, this message uh, at all. But what I do expect is that the Spirit will move among you, and I, move among us. To find ways and people that we can invite to join in with what God is doing to the people of St. John's in a spacious way. And the first opportunity to be blessed in this new spacious place is the 24th and 31st of July. There's going to be other opportunities that come down the pipe, but don't wait for them. Try it out. It can be really intimidating to invite someone to come and take part in what's happening. I know for the, my first few years here, I really struggled with that. If the minister is struggling with that at times, I, I can imagine how difficult it is for you. But once I, I came to the point and realized that it's not about me, but it's about Christ, and it's about God doing something powerful through this community of St. John's, then it was a, a, a lot easier to let some of that anxiety go. And so I'm, I'm really excited for the, 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 the neighbors and friends 
that our family is going to invite in the next couple weeks. We've been praying with these folks for a long time, this situation for a long time. I know there's people in your hearts and minds that you think, well, maybe I should ask them or maybe I should talk to them. Don't wait any longer. Pray about it and then act on it. Think and live outside the box. If we have any, um, any hope, that hope is in Christ. We need to put our trust in him. We need to, to work like everything depends on us and pray like everything depends on God and put our trust in him fully. And so I invite you next week and the week after to come along with neighbors and friends into this new spacious place, trusting what God can do. At this time, I'd like to uh, invite uh, uh, Lorian to come forward. Uh, we did a, a little last minute uh, shuffle in the order of service, but uh, uh, sometimes, I, I, Lorian, Lorian's a very gracious person, so that's, that I allowed me to do that. But we're gonna hear a, a special song called Trust in the Lord. Thank you to the Grayson family, and uh, we say amen to that. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we trust in you. As we just heard so, so beautifully sung and played, we want to, to trust in you with all our hearts. 
And as difficult as it is to not worry about tomorrow, we trust that you've got it under control. And so we long to live in ways that acknowledge you and your presence with us. And that we do trust in you. God, today we remember those uh, in our church family who are grieving and who are hurting during a time of, uh, of significant loss in their own family. Lord, we pray that you would draw near to them in their time of grief and that uh, as they've built this relationship with you for, for years and, and decades and a lifetime, or that they would continue to trust in your provision, trust in the strength that you provide, trust in the healing power of the peace of Christ and the ongoing friendship of the Holy Spirit. May it be present to all those grieving in this season. Lord, we pray for those who are, are living with illness, for those who know precisely the thing that's going on in their body and those that are, are living in a season of, of wondering and worry. Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit, the power of Christ, to allow physical healing to happen. Lord, we invite you to uh, enlighten the, the doctors and medical professionals who are are providing that, that physical care with ways in which healing can happen through medicine. And Lord, we pray uh, for those who are worried with, with many sleepless nights that they would find rest and peace in you. And that they would know strength of body and also strength of spirit through this difficult testing time. And Lord, we, we pray for our public witness in this community of Grimsby. We pray that each one here and in those who are not here but uh, want to be here, that you would deepen our trust in you and that you would continue to empower us to think and live outside this little box that we've created in your name. Lord, we thank you for the way that you led us through a difficult season. And we know there may be some more difficulties ahead. They're, they're never fully gone. But we trust, Lord, that you've led us to this spacious place, this place of abundance. Lord, help us not to just trust with our hearts and with our minds, but help us to trust with our friendships, with the gift of invitation, with the gift of, of, of celebrating who you are, that it makes a difference in our lives and that it can make the diff a wonderful difference in the lives of those that we care about. Lord, as we uh, really focus on this particular outreach project the next couple of weeks, we invite your, your spirit to uh, help us to set aside our anxieties about it, but help us to see the spacious place that lays before us. And Lord, we ask your blessing on uh, on our, our times together in the weeks ahead, that it would be fertile ground for, for wonderful conversations to happen. For people to, to hear your story in a way that, that compels them to consider something different or to consider something deeper. Lord, in, inspire and instill in us a, a spirit of invitation and inclusion. Lord, help us to to overcome our desire to sit and wait for something to happen. But move among us mightily, because we have an incredible story to share, and an incredible love to share, and a warm welcome to share. For this story, this love, and this welcome, they're not just ours, they are yours. Bless us and empower us to be good stewards uh, of these things. To share them joyfully and abundantly in the weeks ahead. So Lord, we pray today for those that we want to invite. 
for those that we want to encourage to come. We want to help along the way. You know, those people that are in our minds and our hearts, we've never thought about it before. We put that person, that family, those neighbors, those loved ones there now. As we pray for them this week, give us opportunities to speak with them and connect with them and invite them to participate in what you're doing. Lord, remove all obstacles uh, and, uh, and bless us in this new spacious place which you have provided and led us to. We pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the one who loves us, who welcomes us, and who sends us forward in his name. And together we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we go uh, from this time of worship, uh, let us join our hearts and voices together in praise of God as we sing Simply Trusting Every Day. as we go from this time and this place let us go uh, with trusting hearts and expectant hearts that Christ will do something through us for his glory help us trust in the wonderful message the wonderful welcome and the deep love that he has shared with each one of us help us to trust you and inviting others to experience it for the first time or for the next time. Go and be filled with the love of God, our Heavenly Father. Go trusting in the peace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and trust in the power of the Holy Spirit who equips us for all seasons. Go trusting and in peace and in power to serve the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm.